Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah. Uh, it's an honor to be a part of this beautiful endeavor in this beautiful month, in this beautiful time. And I uh, was asked to share a few reflections on the 13th juz of the Quran, which begins towards the end of Surah Yusuf and then Surah Ar Ra'd and Surah Ibrahim. So we wanted to, uh, of course, the chapter on the great Prophet Joseph, peace and blessings be upon him, the Karim ibn. Al Karim ibn Al Karim ibn Al Karim, as our Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he is the noble and venerable one who is the son of a noble and venerable one, the son of a noble and venerable one, the son of a noble and venerable one. That Yusuf, peace be upon him, the son of Yaqub, Jacob, the son of Ishaq, Isaac, the son of Ibrahim, Abraham, peace be upon them all. It's a sublime story and. Uh, we just wanted to highlight two verses towards the end of the surah uh, in the context of his triumph in the end. Of course, his life was a life of tremendous challenge, yet Allah Ta'ala delivered him from those challenges. And uh, the first verse that we wanted to reflect on together in the context of his triumph at the end is verse 92 that when his brethren were gathered and uh, he had the opportunity to respond to their treachery earlier in his life, uh, Allah Ta'ala highlights his statement, peace and blessing be upon him. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem. Qala la alaykum al -yawm. He said, there is no tathrib, there is no blame upon you on this day. Yaghfirullahu lakum. May God forgive you all. Wa huwa arhamur rahimin. And he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. Uh, tathrib is an interesting word in Arabic. It is related to the root word from which the city Yathrib was named. In other words, Yathrib the place of migration of the Prophet ﷺ, which would transform into Medina Munawwara, the great illuminated city. Uh, the prior name Yathrib is related to the root, which is blame, censure, rebuke. And so, you know, just like the, the presence of Prophets, Ali Musalam, it turns something, a place that's blameworthy or a situation that's blameworthy into a situation that's praiseworthy and beautiful. Our Prophet ﷺ, by his mere presence in Medina Munawwara transformed it from Yathrib to its new name forever, Medina Munawwara or also called Taba and Tayba, the pure, the, 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 the uh, holy illumined city, uh, the true place of civilization, Medina. So that uh, the basis of the prophetic way is not exacting revenge. And of course, there are circumstances, the sacred law allows for uh, retribution, but the, often the higher road is overlooking and pardoning. And we see this manifested in the great example of Prophet Joseph, peace be upon him, that in this time, his entire, you know, from a material perspective, his entire young youth uh late youth and young adulthood and maturity was robbed from him from his his time with his family his time in his home his time with his blessed father the great prophet yaqub alayhi salam uh, that from a material lens but from a spiritual lens of course allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was favoring him with great great honors and distinctions that were to be manifest in different stages and everything that happens to a believer is good for the believer our Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Imam Ahmad relates in the Musnad, عَجَبًا لِلْمُؤْمِنْ لَا يَقْضِيَ اللَّهُ لَهُ شَيْئًا إِلَّا كَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهُ O كَمَا قَالَ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, How wondrous is the believer, Allah decrees nothing for him, except that it's good for him. And of course, the, the greatest of believers are the Prophets, peace be upon them all. And so, 
in this triumph when he was delivered, uh, and now he is he is positioned in Egypt with with honor and dignity uh, from even a material perspective. He always was a master of honor and dignity spiritually, but now it's manifested in his worldly uh, place in society, and he has the opportunity to uh, to take vengeance against his brothers. What does he say? La alaykum al -yawm. On this day, there's no blame on you. Allah will forgive you. May Allah forgive you. rahimin, And he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. bi akhlaqillah. The Prophet, according to a narration, is reported to have said, وسلم, which is one of the foundations of our ethical principles in Islam, is adorn yourselves with qualities that mirror the divine attributes. bi akhlaqillah. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is arhamur rahimin. Allah is the most merciful of those who show mercy. He is the most forgiving. He is the one who forgives. He is ghafir al dhamb subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is al ghafur. He is al ghaffar. He is ar rahman. He is ar rahim. All of these beautiful names of mercy and forgiveness, al, -al, -al, -al afu. One of the ways the sunnah of the nights of Ramadan, Allah may inna afu and to hibbul afu fa'fu anna. Oh Allah, you are the one who pardons. You love pardoning, so pardon us. The great Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam in this maqam, he manifests, takhalluku bi akhlaqillah. He mirrors in his own human capacity uh, qualities that reflect the divine attributes. And so he says, la tathriba alaykum al -yawm. And we know in our in the seerah of the blessed Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, that he too manifested this at Fath Mecca. And again, at Fatih Mecca, in the opening of Mecca, he had the, the opportunity after being, uh, again, treated unjustly and treacherously by his people of the Quraysh who fought him for years and, and caused so much difficulty for him and his blessed companion, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, radiallahu anhum ajma'een. And he had the opportunity to have just uh, retribution against them. It's reported that he said something similar. La tathriba alaykum al -yawm. There's no blame upon you on this day. There's no blame upon you on this day. And so the great, the, 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 the true triumph of those that Allah love, that those, those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, is the triumph of, of the soul, the triumph of character. It's the triumph of, of, of overwhelming mercy. Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-Rahman, irhamu man fil ard yarhamukum o yarhamkum man fil sama. The first hadith that's in many settings classically is taught to uh, students of hadith is, is people of mercy, Allah will show mercy to them. Have mercy on, on those on earth and Allah will have mercy. Uh, uh, the one on, in, in the heavens will have mercy on you. The one whose majesty is in the heavens will have mercy on you. So again, reflecting the divine attributes in our own human capacities. Those people who are merciful, the all merciful will have mercy on them. And what and that great triumph is the way to win hearts. And so just as our Prophet Wasallam forgave the Quraysh, at Fatih Mecca, and ultimately they became Muslim, some of them at that time, some a little bit later, but their hearts were won over. And so too the brethren of Yusuf alayhi salam, they were reunited, a, a, uniting, a, re, a reuniting of family. Uh, amazingly, this the spiritual triumph is conjoined with a reunion to family. So the Prophet, the blessed Prophet Joseph, Yusuf alayhi salam, his forgiveness is for his brothers, and then he is reunited in love with his siblings and his family. And the Quraysh were the family of the Prophet Sallallahu extended. It was one tribe. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they, they were his qawm, although in terms of his message, his qawm is all of humanity. He is the universal Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But immediately he had Silat al-Rahim, he had Rahim, he, he was a relative of Quraysh. And so the, the pardoning of them at Fatih Makkah was reuniting with family. And, and so there's so many profound uh, lessons in this that really, you know, so one of the things we can do in this blessed time of Ramadan is to make toba repentance for all of the times we were unable to forgive any, any grudges we had in our heart to, to, to ask Allah to forgive us for holding on to any rancor and to make sure we let go of all grudges in, in, on this day.
tonight and in these in the second half of the blessed month that's approaching now to let go of grudges and to have a free and open heart salamat sadr one of the great heirs of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ibn ata'illah rahimahullah he says thalathatun min akhlaq al there are three salient virtues of the awliya the saints that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves salamat uh, sadr wa sakhawat nafs wa husnan dhan bil bi ibadillahi ta'ala he says uh, a a a heart that is free of rancor and malice and grudges salamat sadr and sakhawat nafs generosity of soul right generosity of hand is to give something of our wealth for good causes to help those people in need Generosity of soul is to go above and beyond that, to not only give something of our money, but to give something of our overwhelming concern from the heart, from the soul, whether it's time, whether it's energy, whether it's sitting and uh, consoling someone in difficulty, that whatever it might be, generosity of soul. And the third virtue of the saints, according to Ibn Atta'illah, rahimahullah, husn al bi ibadillah, is to assume the best intentions of fellow man to assume the best of intentions with the servants of Allah our fellow man our brothers and sisters to not assume bad intentions uh, and so that's the first verse we wanted to highlight the second one again related to the great triumph of this great prophet peace be upon him prophet Yusuf alayhi salam was when uh, he's reunited with his family and this is verse 101 and Allah Ta'ala says, الْعَرْشِ That he raised his, his two parents upon, upon the throne. And they went down prostrating for his sake. And this was the dream. So he says, وَقَالَ And he says, يَا أَبَتِي هَذَا تَأْوِيلُ رُؤْيَايَ مِنْ قَبْلِ oh my, oh my dear father, this is the explanation, the ta'wil, the interpretation of my dream, my vision from beforehand. قَدْ جَعَلَهَا رَبِّ حَقَّ My Lord made it true and real. And naam. قَدْ جَعَلَهَا رَبِّ حَقَّ وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجِنْ وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدْوِي مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي إِنَّ رَبِّ لَطِيفُ لِمَا يَشَاءُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ and my and and he referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was so good to me waqad ahsana bi and he was so good to me when id akhrajani min asjid when he took me out of prison and when he brought you all from the desert afterwards min ba'di an after remo uh, after the shaytan had uh, interfered between me and my brethren. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. After the devil had sown dissension, between me and my brethren. This is amazing. Verily, my Lord is Latif, is subtle in his kindness and gentle. Lima yasha for whatever and whomever he wills. In Nahu Huwal Ali Hakim, verily he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is omniscient and of infinite wisdom. That look at his his hal, peace be upon him. Look at his vision, his vista, his vantage, his perspective. The from a from a worldly material lens. It was tribulation after tribulation after tribulation. He was squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. As a young boy thrown in a well, abandoned by his brothers, lost, taken away from his family, enslaved unjustly, sold to, uh, you know, to, to a, a government minister whose wife then tries to seduce him and then he is falsely accused and then he is imprisoned unjustly and then he tarries in prison for so many years. and. After all of that trauma, he says, what's his reaction? What's his vantage? Qad Allah was so good to me. Allah was so excellent to me. 
like that. All he can see is beauty, peace be upon him. He was, ironically, he was given half of beauty in his very person, in his, in his demeanor and appearance, peace be upon him. He was granted half of beauty. But his, his beauty was not just of form, it was of content. It was not just of khalq, it was of khuluq. It was not just of his appearance, it was his, his heart, his precious heart, such that he could only see the beauty of Allah with all of that jalal, with all of, all of that rigor, the divine majesty manifesting in, in, in tribulation and, and qabd, you know, squeezing him, peace be upon him, he, he sees the beauty. Uh, Imam Qushayri relates in his chapter on Raja, on hope, that one of the early masters said, hope is ru'yatul jamal fi ayn al-jalal. It is, hope is to recognize the divine beauty in the very midst of the divine rigor, in the very midst of the tribulations that are a, a reflection of the divine rigor and majesty. And he had hope the entire time. And so his optimism overflows such that his, the only thing he can see afterwards is the good. And so what does he say? Allah was so good to me. He didn't say, you know, Allah tested me by putting me in prison. No. He ascribes only the good to Allah. Allah Ta'ala is the governor of all affairs of the world. He is the decreer and master of every atom in the universe, of every circumstance that occurs. But out of etiquette, we attribute just the good to him. The evil, the difficult, we attribute to our own shortcomings or the work, the work of, of the devil. And he does that because when it comes to the treachery of his brothers, he doesn't say that, you know, he doesn't ascribe that to Allah. And out of etiquette, he doesn't even ascribe it to his brothers. What does he say, peace be upon him? That, uh, so, so he only sees the beauty that Allah is the one that took me out of prison. And then Allah is the one that reunited me with my family. He brought you all from the desert. After what? After the devil, after sh shaitan caused dissension between me and my brothers. So he doesn't even see the harm and, and the injustice from his brothers as from them. He attributes it to the, the shaitan. And so, uh, our, you know, the, the two dimensions here, the first dimension of his, ad, of his adab, his etiquette, peace be upon him, is that he attributes only the good and the beautiful to Allah because all he sees from, in, in terms of his vision of his Lord is the good and the beautiful peace be upon him. And the second dimension we wanted to highlight is that, so he, so he lists the blessings that Allah took me out of the prison and Allah reunited me with my family. He brought you all back. And then the second dimension we wanted to highlight is even when it comes to his brothers, he does not attribute the, the wrongdoing to them. He attributes it to the devil. The shaitan came between me and them. La ilaha illallah. This is salamu to sadr. This is, this is, these, are, these, are, these are the greatest hearts, the hearts of the prophets, peace be upon them all. It was the shaitan that caused dissension between me and them. Inna rabbi latifun lima yasha. Verily, my Lord is subtle and gentle. You see, because the, the uh, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, that uh, when, when, when we're in difficulty, when we're being when the circumstances of our lives are bearing down on us, Allah's lutf is still there. This is what our teachers teach us. This is what the great imams of our tradition taught and, and bequeathed to us, is that Allah's lutf is never absent from the tribulations that, affl that afflict us. Allah's lutf is never absent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His lutf is omnipresent. And so we may not be able to detect it, but we trust in Allah that it's there. That Allah's subtle grace is always in the background, as it were. And the more we open our hearts to it, the more it will, inshallah, manifest in the forefront because it's there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is latif. And again, the great Imam Ibn Atayla, he says, uh, Man uh, uh, min you know, whoever, whoever thinks that Allah's subtle grace is separate, and dissevered from his de the decrees that that uh, cause that that are tribulations, then that's because he is short sighted, short sighted in the heart.
short-sighted in the heart. And so the great Prophet Yusuf says, Allah Ta'ala quotes him as saying, Inna Rabbi latifun lima, yasha, latifun lima yasha. He says, Rabbi, you know, my nurturing, my caring Lord, because his entire life was devotion to Allah. Whatever, where, wherever he was, in public or in private, in good times or, or bad times, he was oriented to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so he says, Rabbi, verily my Lord, the one that was nurturing me the whole time. You know, he was essentially orphaned, effectively, in terms of the way he experienced his later youth and his then young adulthood. Yet he, he recognized the divine lutf in providing his, his nurturing and, and the care and concern of Allah. Look at our Prophet Wasallam. He was actually orphaned and he never was distant from Allah. He was never, uh, uh, he was never unmindful or uh, heedless of his Lord. Our Prophet Wasallam was always cognizant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are, these are the, the prophets are the greatest of examples, peace be upon them all. And then he concludes, in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the verse, إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Allah is all-knowing and Allah is all-wise. Whatever we're facing, it's not outside of Allah's knowledge and it's not severed from His wisdom. There is a great wisdom, a surpassing, astonishing wisdom if we but patiently persevere. Uh, we ask Allah Ta'ala to make His people of beautiful opinion of Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a means of recognizing His hidden grace. And he has stated in the hadith Qudsi, subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the tongue of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the words of, in the expression of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ana inda dhanni abdi bi, wa ana ma'ahu idha dhakarani. That Allah ta'ala says in the hadith Qudsi, I am in the opinion of my servant of me, and I am with him when he makes remembrance of me. And this is also the state of all the Prophets alayhi wa sallam, and certainly Prophet Yusuf alayhi wa sallam, how was it that the people in the prison recognized to even ask him about interpretation of dreams? Because he was so realized in his remembrance of Allah and the light that emanates from that, that the people could see there's something unique about this person. And so Allah is with us if we make remembrance of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then our hearts can have more light to think well of him. And when we think well of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah manifests that hidden lutf, what, what we see is hidden, what's actually there, it becomes more concrete for us, inshallah. That's the promise of our Prophet Sallallahu in that sublime hadith. And Abu Sulaiman al-Dawrani, one of the great Imams of our tradition said, مَنْ حَسَّنَ ظَنَّهُ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ فَتَحَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بَابَ rahma Whoever beautifies his opinion of Allah, then Allah has opened for him the gates of his mercy. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us the people of Ahl al Quran, Aladino, Ahluka, wa Khasa, Tukia, Rahma Rahmin. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us true heirs of the Prophet's Animus Salam, true heirs and inheritors of our Prophet. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people who recognize Allah's wisdom and Allah's subtle grace in our most difficult of times, and that in our good times we are full of even more optimism and gratitude. Al Afu Minkum, pardon me. Was وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.